Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we have hit the last video in this series from 2021's External Exams in Queensland for General Mathematics. So this is our seventh question on paper two and it's a sequences question. Let's get right into it. It's worth six marks. The table shows the total number of times a new song is played on a music service in the days following its first release. The songwriter is paid 0.175 cents, that's less than one cent, every time their song is played and will be played after 60, will be paid after 60 days. And here's our little table showing us um, the number of days since it was released, 5, 10, 15 and 20, and the total number of time it was played in thousands. Now they predict that by the time um, of 60 days is reached, they'll be owed at least $1,000, so that's greater than $1,000. Given that the number of times the song is played is increasing exponentially, evaluate the reasonableness of this prediction. So we're going to follow Polly's C plan do check problem solving model here. So let's start with looking in the question for some key information that's important to us. The first thing I can see in this question is this information about how much they are paid every time their song is played. Now it's a key thing to note, it's not 17 and a half cents it's less than one cent. And I guarantee you some students probably made the mistake of thinking that was 17 and a half cents, but it's not, it's a lot less than one cent. And they're gonna be paid after 60 days. So we've got to work out how many times it's been played after the 60 day mark is reached. So more key information is what we're evaluating. Will they actually be able to earn an income of greater than $1,000 in 60 days? But here's another really important key word, exponential. This gives us a big clue. And if you don't know what exponential means, and you should by the time you're doing your external exams, it means if we were to graph it, it's going to be going up and up and up and up. And the rate it increases is increasing um, each time, which tells us it's not going to be straight line growth. That word exponential is our clue that it's a geometric sequence. So we're not even going to talk about arithmetic sequences now. We're going to focus primarily on geometric sequences. And you can tell that just by looking as well. If we were to just give a quick inspection of this table here, we can see that between the fifth and the tenth day it goes up by four and then six and then nine. So we can see that there's not a common difference as such. There's a common ratio. We've got to work out what that is. So jumping to our formula sheet, we're going to pull out the geometric sequence model and work purely with that. So the next part of my planning um, part would be to actually write the equation out and then to state my variables. Now I guarantee you lots of students would have missed doing that. A lot of students jump straight into solving and they don't actually state their variables. This was actually worth a mark to state those variables. So that's very important. Let's talk a little bit about what those variables were. It's very tempting when you see number of days being 5, 10, 15 to say that 5 is term 5 and that 10 is term 10. In fact, the first time I had a go at solving this, um, I made the same mistake and I tried to find term one by using simultaneous equations and got some really weird answers, went down a rabbit hole there. So let's not do that. We look straight at the question. The first term they've given us in that table is um, the five days. So we're treating five like it's term one and that is the number eight. Um, so that's the value of term one. Term two is 12, term three is 18. So you could have numbered off in the table, term one, two, three, that might have also given you part of your variable definition there. Something important to note too, that as part of your equation, you've got Tn to the nth term. That's the total number of plays. And n is the number of days divided by five. Now you might be thinking, well, doesn't that take me back to term one? Well, no, term one is five, uh, sorry, is eight and it's that fifth, that five at the top, we can cross that out and change that to term one. The reason why we're doing this though, is we're trying to work out at the 60th day, what term that would be. Well, the 60th day, if we go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on, we're actually gonna need 12 fingers to do that. So that's why we're calling N the number of days divided by five, because the first term T1 is five, number of days five divided by five is T1. 
Okay, that took me a little while to get my head around. Hopefully you're a bit more switched on than me. Okay, the common ratio now we know is term two divided by term one. That's how we find it. So we're gonna take 12 and divide that by eight. And we're gonna get 1.5, so that's our common ratio. And for correctly determining that, we got our next mark. Our next step now is to find term um, on the 60 days. So we've written our um, equation now. We've substituted some numbers in. We know T1, we know um, R, and actually writing it out like that got you your third mark for determining the geometric model. So it wouldn't have been a good idea to jump straight into substituting everything into the equation, just substituting T1 and R first, and then we work through with N. Okay, so now we know we've, we've said earlier that the number of days divided by 5 is our value for N, our, ter our term number. Well, we've got 60 days divided by 5. That's the 12th term. And like I said before, counting on your fingers, 5, 10, 15, 20. And when you get to 60, you're going to use 12 fingers up. That's our 12th term. So now we're going to substitute in the N value, which is 12, take away 1 in that power. And then when we actually do that on our calculator, we find out that the 12th term is 691.98. Now, you might say to yourself, well, that's not a whole number of plays. No, it's not. But you've got to remember the number of times played is multiplied by a thousand because it's the number of times played in thousands so it's not actually the fact that on the fifth day it was played eight times it was played eight thousand times so now we're going to actually multiply that by one thousand and then we'll get an answer of 691 980,000 plays at the 60 day mark which is our next mark for determining the total number of plays and I guarantee you a lot of students forgot about this little thousands, the cheeky little thousands up in that table there. So um, they would have said that the number of plays was 691.98, which is not a logical answer because you can't play at 0.98 of a time. Okay, our next step is to predict the income. We're taking this payment in cents up here now and multiplying it by the number of pays, or plays, and we get 121,000 cents. Okay, that's where another, another group of students will forget that this is in cents. So now we've got to change it back to dollars. We're going to move that decimal place two times to the left and we're going to get an answer of $1,210.97. So we get our next mark now for determining the income and then we need to evaluate the reasonableness of the prediction now by writing a statement and it's a reasonable prediction because $1,210.97 is more than $1,000. So while this is a complex question there wasn't really a lot of maths that we had to do. We've got our sixth mark now for evaluating our solution but there's a lot of little tricky places that you could have gone wrong in this question. Firstly not stating your variables and that's an easy one to fix. Always remember when you write a formula to state your variables. It doesn't matter what the formula is for whether it's compound interest, whether it's a formula for distance on the earth or whether it's you're using sequences, always state every variable that's in that formula and explain what it is. That was the first mark. Another place students would have gone wrong was not recognizing that this is less than one cent. And I guarantee you some forgot to change it into dollars as well. And also not clearly understanding that this is the first term, this is the second term. So that whole understanding of terms, they've kind of confused you by calling it 5, 10, 15, 20. You could have actually crossed that out and written term one, term two, term three, and you would have been spot on. I think the next place students would have gone wrong is with this um, needing to change from cents to dollars and missing this thousands of plays. It's an easy one to miss. It's hidden there in the table, and it's very tempting not to actually read headings in table. Always read everything. Okay, well, if you found this video helpful today, why not share this video with a friend or a teacher? Tell somebody about it. You could even like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so you'll always know when we've got new content available. And as I said, this is the last video in this series and you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for some more videos coming up on the channel and see if they relate to what you're learning about at school. And if they don't, why not search through the playlist that we've got and find one that does. We've got loads of content on here um, for people of all ages. Why not um, also tell us in the comments if you found the video helpful. That'll help future viewers to see if it's worth watching. Of course it is. And if you've got any questions, you can contact me on mcclutchymass at yahoo.com or Facebook and Instagram is a great place to stay in touch as well. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass. Thank you so much for staying on me with a journey on this paper. Have a wonderful day.